Now, more of Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Opportunity Project, the only show directly addressing the problems and solutions for Illinois. Now, from AM560, here's Dan Proft. Dan, back with Eric Cohn on this edition of Rising, and uh, the story of the week for me, oh, man, uh, Jim Oberweiss. Uh, Jim Oberweiss, of course, uh, the principal of Oberweiss Dairy. You enjoy his ice cream, his burgers, his pizza shops mm-hmm. in the metropolitan area. He's also a state senator, re- Republican from Sugar Grove, out Kane County way, uh, telling uh, Cranes this week that uh, the Oberweiss Dairy chain will continue in Illinois, but unlike expansion in Wisconsin, Michigan, Indiana and Missouri, the outlets in Illinois will be in leased storefronts, no longer company-owned real estate. Oberweiss saying high property taxes and declining population in the state and the metropolitan area are the reasons. If you own land, where is the value likely to go up where you have growth and low taxes, said Oberweiss. Neither is the case with Illinois. How badly the Pauls have screwed up this state. 42 sites in the Midwest and has been adding three to five locations in Illinois a year. Uh, and uh, But the, those investments are being changed to reflect the reality on the ground in terms of where his investment dollar is treated the best. And it's in our Midwestern neighbors, not here. A remarkable statement to make for a state senator, even in the minority party. A- absolutely. It, it testifies to, obviously, the underlying problems in Illinois, exactly as he said, no growth high taxes, especially the property tax problem that undergirds all of it. Um, and it's a decision that uh, you know individual people are making, too, with regard to if I'm here in Illinois, um, one, am I looking to get out? But also, you know, do I want to own or do I want to rent here? And look, there, there are in costs inherent to both of those. Your property tax bill of the property, if you're a renter, is going to get passed along to you in some way, shape, or form. Um, but, but I don't have the long-term It's commitment. a heck of a lot easier yeah, to get out. Exactly. And that's what it is. That's absolutely what it is. That's why, you know, for as much as people talk about the uh, tower cranes dotting the sky in Chicago, uh, those buildings that are going up are, by and large, rental buildings. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you think you just can churn a bunch of millennials through River North and the Gold Coast, Lincoln Park and Old Town uh, to prop up a city of three million, well, two point eight million and declining uh, a city that large where you've got, uh, you know, 75 to 80 percent of the other wards uh, winnowing into non-existence, certainly economically, then you're just fooling yourself. And uh, and that's sort of the point that that Oberweiss is making. I don't see my long term in Illinois. And this is somebody who, you know, again, people with the ability to pay people with the ability to move. Uh, yeah. The, the decranes, decranes for answer from the fantasy island sector of yeah, those trying yeah, to justify right. um, uh, growth yeah. in Illinois. Uh, here's another interesting fact that you point out about those rental buildings that are going up. I believe I've read over the last maybe year and a half, two different stories in cranes about how there's a, this huge glut of rental properties about to come on the market. Um, but you know, this, happened, this weird thing's happening. It's not really having an effect on the actual cost of rents. They're not going down. Now, you flood a market with a commodity usually, and you expect the price to go down, but it's not. And why is that? Because the people who own those buildings are not stupid. And they know that their property taxes are only headed in one direction. They know those kinds of truths that underlying uh, defaults on the debt that Chicago has, particularly related to Chicago public schools, means an automatic property tax increase if that actually happens as we continue to move closer and closer to default being a possibility. Uh, That's why your rents continue to be so high. And uh, what we have in terms of looking into the crystal ball for the near future is uh, more likely than not Governor Spaulding and all of his big promises for spending our way to utopia like we have been attempting to do with Republicans and Democrats for the better part of the last 45, 50 years. Uh, Pritzker, uh, Illinois Policy Institute, putting his uh, spending proposals in the context of an income tax hike or graduated state income tax, whatever those numbers turn out to be, because, of course, uh, they're going to have to start by negotiating the definition of middle class, according to Pritzker. But uh, talking about what the 
uh, 13 to 18 billion dollars in new spend for a state that's got uh, 250 billion dollars in debt. Yeah, that's that's and the truth is that's a conservative number because there are other things he has suggested that it's really just not possible to put an, an accurate number on. And there are another things he's done too, where he has you know walked into certain uh, statements of oh we should do this and then walked away from them and walked back into them again. Um, so between 13 and 18 billion dollars in new spending is uh, uh, probably on the more conservative side of the estimate. Um, and you know, I'd, I'd call it spending like a drunken sailor, but that in this case seems to be an insult to the fiduciary responsibility of drunken sailors. I mean, this is just promising with no sense of regard for reality whatsoever. And backing that up against the idea of a uh, progressive tax of, um, you know, but oh, we're not going to tell you the rates. We'll, uh, we'll figure that out later. It's like, okay, well, fine. Then let, let's take a look at someone who's given an example. State Representative Robert Martwick was kind enough to introduce legislation yeah. in Springfield. The Friendly Act, um, as these things are always so Orwellianly called. Uh, we you know, the pill, take your money, Institute, but I'm going to be nice about it. Yeah, Illinois Policy Institute took a look at that um, to see. Uh, oh, so it's millionaires and billionaires paying the the freight on a progressive tax, right? Um, I'm sure the people making around seventeen thousand three hundred dollars a year are going to be shocked to find out that under this definition, they're rich. They're the ones who are also going to be paying increased uh, taxes under this plan. Yeah, you you have to. I mean, it's always where middle income. The the money is where the middle income is because that's where the people are. And so any uh, graduate state income tax will necessarily include middle income families. That's just a fact. That's what's going to happen if they move in this direction. And it also underscores the importance of these legislative races. So everybody wants to not everybody, but the, a certain segment of the electorate, particularly in the suburbs, you see sort of wooed by this notion that the election in Illinois is about who's in the White House. No, actually, it's about your house and your household income. Uh, and uh, control of the General Assembly or the distribution of control is going to turn out to be very instrumental in the value of your home and the percentage of the income you earn that you get to keep. Because if you move Madigan in the House from a majority to a supermajority, then, and you're going to have Cullerton in the Senate more likely than not continue to enjoy his supermajority, and you put Spalding on top of that cake, then you're talking about uh, the uh, uh, bandwidth to amend the Constitution, which is what's required to impose this graduated state income tax. Let's suspend disbelief just for a moment and say that uh, your, your millionaires and your billionaires are going to be the ones paying the majority of the freight on a progressive tax. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at New Jersey from um, I believe a year or two ago. One billionaire right moves out of the state blows a multi-million dollar hole in the state's budget um again the, the problem with the idea of laying it all on these incredibly wealthy people as i i, I know you want to say as well uh the people with uh, the you know the ability to pay as they're often described are the ones with the ability to leave a lot more easily than those people in the middle class lower middle class who may desperately want to get out but it's expensive to move. Well, and those people are leaving, too. I mean, we know uh, that the, the exodus, people leaving, median income, household income, 70, low 70 grand. People coming in, which is a much smaller number, mm -hmm. uh, low 50 grand. That $20,000 spread is the biggest in the nation. So it is middle, upwardly mobile, middle income families that are leaving as well. And, of course, I mean, it's just this... this, this uh, fairy tale that the left, uh, the Chicago Democrat crime family, sell people. And if you didn't have an inert Republican Party, you could probably uh, make the case convincingly to the contrary. But the notion that people just have to sit here and take it. Whatever the politicians do, you just have to sit here and take it. You don't have any options. This is America, man. This is a free, mobile society. And guess what? Living in Northwest Indiana is not really that much different than living in Naperville or DuPage County in terms of having access to the great cities that is Chicago, but lowering my monthly mm -hmm. nut by 40% in so doing from moving from DuPage to Lake County, Indiana. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just don't know why. I mean, I do know why, I suppose. But this static analysis of, well, this is the new policy and it, we're just going to be force fed it and everybody's going just going to just going to uh, to swallow it. It's just not the case. I, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of people have to leave to prove it 
to prove that it's not the case. How about the uh, the fake concern for kind of the those in the worst conditions among us that we often hear oh, from, yeah, from right. politicians? Um, who is all of this going to disproportionately impact? You mentioned that you know it's about your home. Um, well, you look at the polls. Paul Simon, uh, Public Policy Institute, found that you know upwards of fifty percent of people who say they want to leave, it's because of high taxes. Um, more people say they want to leave than are even capable of leaving. Seventeen percent of Illinois homes underwater in their mortgages. So those are people who probably would like to get out and get to a place where they can live a more functional life, uh, have to write a check to get oh, out yeah. from under the burden of their home. You go we, go to saveyourhomenow.org, uh, this website that we put up, this pack that I run, and uh, the stories we've inventoried. These stories from all over the state, from people who live in a trailer park with a home that's you know 70 grand, all the way up to people that are in multi-million dollar mansions in the suburbs. Everybody's the same in terms of taking a hammering. And obviously some people can endure a hammering better than others. But of course, as you say, as you go down the socioeconomic spectrum, um, people are less able to take the kind of beating they're taking at the hands of their own government in this state. And also it inhibits those same people from the upward mobility that perhaps their work ethic and their aspiration would otherwise avail to them. So there's no doubt. I mean, it's criminal. It's a taking. It's a taking. When the government does it, it's if somebody sticks you up and takes it, something unfairly from you, well, obviously they're sticking you up. That's the definition of doing it unfairly. The, the, the government's doing the same thing in Illinois. Well, because your house is collateral for somebody else's pension, promises they made they knew they couldn't finance, that somehow makes it okay because... You know, it's in the context of our representative form of government. The hell it is. The hell it is.